Hi everyone and welcome to the Knit California channel. My name is Leslie, I am Knit California here on YouTube and also over on Instagram and TikTok and today we're talking about beginner knitting math. Whether or not knitting is your strong suit, sometimes in knitting and crochet it needs to be done. Whether we are measuring our gauge, trying to figure out what size garment to make, whether we're trying to figure out how many stripes to add uh, per section of the pattern, something along those lines, there may be something that you need to do that requires math in order to figure it out. Currently, and the reason this idea came to me to make a video about this is I am knitting a second, I don't know if this looks familiar, uh, Ranunculus. This is a pattern by Midori Hirose, and this is a really, really interesting pattern. The beginning of this pattern, the lace section up here, is all knit in one size. Once you finish the lace section, there are then raglan increases, and this is the part when you're placing your markers and splitting for where these raglan increases where these raglan increases are going to be, that's the point where you determine what size you're going to knit. The other interesting thing about this pattern is that it's written so that you can use either fingering, DK, or worsted weight yarn, but the gauge is the same across all of those yarns. The gauge for this pattern is 14 stitches per 4 inches or 10 centimeters. If you're using a fingering or DK weight yarn, that's a pretty large gauge and I knew when knitting this first one and now in knitting the second one that I was not going to be able to reach that gauge using the DK weight yarn that I'm using. So what I had to do was I had to do a little bit of knitting math to figure out what my current gauge is and to figure out what size I wanted to make so that it was going to fit me the way that I want it to fit. So, I'm going to walk you through a simple four-step process that I used. Don't worry if you're not that great at math, not every step includes math, and the reason why I'm walking you through this is to help you uh, in the future. One other thing that I will say is that you could use this knitting math. It doesn't necessarily need to be used for this pattern. You could use this for almost any pattern. If you have a gauge, let's say your gauge swatch is different from the gauge that's recommended in the pattern, you could use these four steps at any time in any pattern to figure out what size that you need to make that will fit you the way that you want it to fit. So let's start with step number one. Step one is to measure your gauge. You can do this if you knit a gauge swatch. Make sure you've got how many stitches per four inches or even how many stitches per one inch. Either measurement will work or you can get this from the actual sweater that you're currently knitting. Um, in my case, since I had already knit the top portion of the ranunculus, I measured my gauge right about here, like right in these last couple rows before I added in the raglan seams. If I'm starting a sweater from scratch, I will likely use my gauge swatch. So for example, for this sweater, I measured my gauge at 17 stitches per four inches. Now this is important because as I mentioned, the recommended gauge for this pattern is 14 stitches per four inches. 14 stitches versus 17 stitches is actually a very large gap when it comes to like what the final uh, measurement of your sweater width-wise will look like. So this is why we're doing the math. Step two is to determine what size you want your final garment to be and or what amount of ease you would like in your final garment. For me, I decided for this sweater that I'm currently knitting that I wanted the final circumference to be 46 inches. That means it's going to give me 6 inches of positive ease based on my own bust measurement. Step 3, this is where the math part actually comes in. So we are going to use our gauge measurement from step 1 and the final size that we want from step 2 to determine the stitch count for the body. So the way that we are going to do this 
we are going to take that final circumference number, we are going to divide it by our gauge length, and then we are going to multiply that by our stitch gauge. That is going to equal the stitch count for the body. So, with all of the numbers that I have previously talked to you about for this sweater, what that equation looks like is I'm doing 46 inches, the final bust measurement I want for my garment, divided by 4 inches, that's our gauge length, that equals, use a calculator here folks, okay, you don't need to do this all by hand, 46 divided by 4 equals 11.5. I'm going to take that number, 11.5, and multiply it by the stitch gauge. So 11.5 times 17 stitches. Remember that was how many stitches per 4 inches I measured on my current sweater. This one. So 11.5 times 17 stitches equals 195.5 stitches, okay? Now we come to step four. This is where we're going to determine what size garment we're going to knit. So now you're going to go back and you're going to look at your pattern. And you're going to look at the stitch counts for the section where you, after you split for the sleeves, and you're looking at the body stitch count. This is what you have just calculated in step number three. So you want to make sure you're not looking at the stitch count before you split for the sleeves because you do not want to include the sleeve stitches in there. Okay? So, when I looked at my pattern for the ranunculus, I found out with 195.5 stitches, the closest stitch count to that was actually 196 stitches. I felt extremely lucky that I was very close. You may end up being in between two sizes, and that's where you're going to have to make a decision as to whether or not you're going to knit the smaller size so it ends up a little bit smaller or the larger sm size so it ends up a little bit bigger um, but that's something that you'll be able to, to determine based off what your knitting style is. For myself I know I'm a tighter knitter so a lot of times I will go up a size in the pattern because I know that my final garment may end up being a little bit smaller than what the measurements actually are in the pattern. So for me, for this ranunculus, that stitch count corresponded to size 5, and so now that I'm at the point in the pattern, or I was, where I was um, placing the markers for these raglan increases, I knew to follow the instructions for that part of the pattern and for all future parts of the pattern according to size 5. Now, I haven't tried this on yet, but I can tell you just from looking at it, it looks like it's going to be the perfect size. I actually went up slightly in this pink version compared to this green version, hopefully for just a couple more inches of positive ease. Um, I just wanted something that was a little bit different. Like, I really like the fit of this green one, but I wanted to see what a larger amount of positive ease would look like, especially in this yarn that I'm using because it's a silk merino blend. Um, all of this is just what I decided for this specific pattern. So, that's it. It was four easy steps. Hopefully this will help you. Like I said, in the future, you can use this knitting math calculation and process, four-step process, for any pattern going forward. Let's say, for example, you're just knitting another pattern, you knit a gauge swatch, and you really like the way the fabric looks, but the stitch count is different. It, maybe it's off by two or three stitches, maybe a little bit more than that, compared to what the gauge is in the pattern, the recommended gauge in the pattern. You can use this four-step process to figure out if you need to change what size you would normally make, make a different size so that the final measurements come out the way that you want them to come out. 
If you have any questions about this process that I did not answer, please leave a comment down below and I will do my best to answer any of those questions. If this is the first time you're seeing one of my videos, I publish videos almost every week, typically podcast style videos where I show you what I'm knitting, what yarns I'm purchasing, what yarns I'm using, and all of my thoughts about knitting, buying yarn, having a big yarn stash, uh, and things of those nature. So I would love for you to subscribe to my channel and consider watching some of my other videos. Thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch today. I hope you learned something and I will see you on the next one. Bye! Oh buddy, what are you gonna tell everyone about knitting math? You like math? Yeah?